one LE X-Ram here. Today, obviously, I'm driving my car, and today's vlog also pertains to my Instagram post that I put up. So, about two weeks ago, my car decided to pop an engine code, or a fault code, if you will, the P062 Alpha, which said something about fuel system A, or fuel pump A, something along those lines. It was fuel system related. And at the time, I had 35,960 some miles on it. And I believe my warranty ran out of 36,000 miles even in three years. And I was coming up on three years. So, just to say, I drove, drove it back home and parked it and rode the bike that day. So I take it into the dealership. I had 11 days and 27 miles left of my warranty. So, those of you that have a new car, really pay attention to when your warranty comes up. And sometimes you get lucky, like I did, and something will happen and it'll actually be covered under warranty. So that aside, I bring it into the dealership, they take it, and a couple hours later I get called, this is on Friday, I get a call and say, hey, we figured out what it is, it's a fuel rail pressure sensor that's gone bad. You need to replace the fuel rails because you can't just change the sensor, you gotta replace the whole fuel rail, at least that's what Chrysler called Instead of being first thing on Saturday morning. Awesome. Take a couple hours, shove the car back, some, sometime mid afternoon, early afternoon. At least that's what I was expecting. So come Saturday afternoon, it's about 3 o'clock, I haven't heard anything from these guys. And normally, I've been a technician, I've worked in dealerships. I understand how it goes, I understand how busy things get. And I do understand service advisors are usually bombarded with people on a constant basis. So, I took it upon myself to give, a, give them a call to kind of get an update. Three o'clock, there you go. Well, let me leave a message with the service manager because your service advisor isn't here today. Like, All right. So 3.30 rolls around, still nothing. I get lunch, I go, you know what? I'm gonna stop by. About four o'clock, they close at five. I get there, the car hasn't been touched. The part that was supposed to come in in the morning didn't come in until, didn't come in the truck until about 3.30. Still haven't gotten it off of the truck. So here I am, it's 4 o'clock, they close at 5, about, actually about 4.15 by this point. Like they found all this information. And I'm like, okay, well I need a vehicle, so you guys need to get me a rental vehicle. Okay, so they get everything set up. And rightfully, I'm pissed off because if I didn't call them and I didn't do my due diligence, I wouldn't have had a vehicle to drive for the weekend or Monday to go to work. And it's Arizona, it's about 100 degrees out now. I don't feel like riding, but I don't have to. So I was pretty pissed off at them for not following up with me and letting me know. Like, again, I've been in the industry, I understand what happens. All I need is a phone call. And that's what I kind of conveyed to the service advisor, who this particular lady had nothing to do with the lack of communication. She was not part of my vehicle. She had nothing to do with this screw up. It was 100% from that service advisor to the service manager. The service manager should have been on top of things. And unfortunately, with this particular dealership, they've all been garbage. If I had anything to do other than an oil change, it's been a nightmare. However, the car's under warranty, so I take it to the dealership. It sucks. So, to continue on, I get it back Monday afternoon. I drive it to work. It sits for eight hours, nine hours. I go start it. It's a little hesitant to start up. I'm like, what the hell? Fires up, I go drive home. Same thing the next night. Same thing the next night. Now I'm starting to smell a trace amount of fuel. And at the time, I'm like, okay, maybe it was just some residual burning off. So I, I let it go for the weekend, and Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, I walk by the front of my car, and I get a real strong smell of fuel. So I'm looking around it for a puddle. Don't see a puddle, don't see anything dripping. So I'm like, okay, drive it to work Monday. It's got the same issue where after it sits for a while, it putters to start acting like it doesn't have fuel pressure. This Hellcat has gauges on it. You can see what the battery 
voltage and everything is. So I'll look at that, see if I'm low on voltage. The battery's fine. And again, in Arizona, battery's dying because the heat isn't an odd thing. It happens regularly. Stuff that normally would last four or five years, out here tends to last like two or three. So I understand that aspect of it. So the next day I decided to take the plastics off and go over to the valve covers and everything. And what they do is they actually cover the fuel rails. So I took that cover off and I started the car for a couple minutes and I shut it off. And not only can I smell strong inside the vehicle, because the night before I had the windows down driving at like 75 degrees like 2 in the morning. So I could get a whiff of it as I'm going along with my windows down. And this time, again, very strong odor of gasoline. I'm like, I know that there's definitely a leak with this sound, with this smell. So, with the covers off, I look at it and I see the cylinder four injector leaking. Just straight up streaming out. The car on, I shut the car off. Obviously, there's still some pressure in the fuel rails. So, it just keeps dripping out with the car off. And it, it just drips down. And it goes on the headers and it's just, I can hear it just burning off. I'm like, great. I got raw fuel going onto these burning hot headers. And I'm re I know that I'm close to the flash point of what gasoline would be because of how hot these headers get. So I'm like, man, I gotta get this thing towed. I don't wanna drive it in. All of the tow trucks, it's about three in the afternoon. All the tow trucks are two, three, four hours away to even take my car. I'm like, I gotta go with the work. This isn't gonna work for me. So I go, fuck it. I'm gonna drive it. Take it into the dealership. I get a rental vehicle again. And off I go for the day. The next morning, about 10 o'clock in the morning, I get a call. And as I suspected, the O ring that I took a picture of were damaged when they were getting put on. The new fuel rails were getting put on. There's technician error that caused a very possible fire that could have started in my car had it been, had I, one, let it go, or two, the damage to the O-ring got worse, which over time, because it looked like it would have rubbed, it could have been a massive fuel leak onto burning hot headers that could have caught my car on fire while driving. Usually what happens is it catches on fire once you pull it to a stoplight and you're sitting. So, my whole spiel that I'm going on right now is really also how to handle being pissed off at negligence in a dealership. A lot of people were going, well, aren't you pissed off? Yeah, of course I am. You know, well, I would have been yelling and everything else. I'm like, you know, you can go that route. And the likelihood of you getting something done any faster is about zero because time's going to be what it's going to be it's not going to happen any faster and in all honesty do you really want your vehicle worked on super quick just to get it just to say that it's fucking done or do you want to get it done right you got to look at it that way and when you think about it in that regard and you understand that technicians are working on just one car and yes i know my car is more expensive than some of the other ones that go in there but i don't expect preferential treatment because of it i just expect them to job right the first night every time. That's, that's it. Period. I understand when shipping doesn't go the way they, they plan. Just expect a phone call letting me know so. To flip out on it doesn't really get anything done. It doesn't accomplish anything. All it does is make you feel better, but at the same time makes you look like a dipshit. So those of you that have bad experiences at dealerships, think about this. Half the time, it's not the service advisor's fault. Almost 90% of the time, it's not the service advisor's fault. The front of the people you talk to, that's, it's mostly not their fault. They are the messengers. They take all your information down. They pass it along. It's from that point on where things usually break down in communication. Again, the service manager is usually the biggest culprit of why things fall apart. They either push something when it doesn't need to be. They withhold information. Or they simply forget to tell people, which is a very big thing. So this isn't the first time at this dealership I've had a problem. I was getting a vibration checked out uh, from the front end of my car, and I noticed at a certain speed I was getting a vibration. Normally that's in 
indicative of something being out of balance. So they did a force test on the tires that I had and found that the one a single tire that I had was actually defective. The sidewall or something like that broke down and caused there to be a kind of a, I don't want to say a dead spot, but a softer spot than there normally would be, which is called vibration. And because of this, they had to replace the tire. Well, I run probably P0 summer tires. People don't have them offhand, so they had to order it. Granted, there's a tire warehouse 20 minutes from the dealership, so it wasn't that big of a deal to get. It took a couple hours, you know, four or five hours, and new tire on. So I get the tire. I, I get the tires put on and everything. I go and check out the car. And I see that all four tires say Pirelli P0, except the one they replaced, which said Pirelli P0 Nero. Totally different tire. And I pointed out to the guys, I'm like, this one has this many letters. This one has this many letters. Do you think it's the right one? No. So, needless to say, I spent nine hours for one tire. And then to top it off, the jokers that were putting the tire on were using a floor jack. It's just the right rear tire. That's all they were replacing. They smacked my quarter panel with the handle. They let it go, and it smacked the quarter panel with a dent in it. I'm like, Needless to say, the dent guy was there on that Friday and it got fixed. Did I flip out on him? No. I showed him that I was displeased with the performance. Showed him that this communication, because the service advisor actually wrote everything down properly as a parts guy and then on the fucking way. People, know your stuff, know your cars, be calm in shitty events. And you'll get what you want. Like I said, I got a rental car for a weekend and for the extra day that I needed. And I didn't have to wave around, I didn't have to scream. I got a nice Ram 1500 both times instead of a real shitty Dart or a little Yaris or a Journey that they almost set me up in. You get what you want by being understanding of the situation and treating people with respect. Plain and simple. So that is my nine minute long rant. Actually, probably like 15 minutes to stop the video twice. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you like the content, subscribe. If not, hit the dislike button. Hey, do what you want to do. But I hope this kind of sheds a little light on ways to handle shitty situations. Especially with dealerships, because it does happen all too often. You all have a good one.